Let's look at some fascinating things that I guarantee you probably didn't already know about the Labrador. You can have every colour of Labrador in one litter. Canine colour genetics are absolutely fascinating and only a little bit complicated. What always blows my mind slightly is that from two black lab parents you can have a litter of black, chocolate and yellow lab puppies, brothers and sisters of all different colours. Put as simply as possible, if those two parents have copies of dominant and recessive genes for black and yellow in their genotype, then they can produce all of the different types of puppy colours. Also, black and yellow pairings and black and chocolate pairings, and in rare cases, yellow and chocolate pairings can also bring this whole kaleidoscope of puppy colours into the world. Fortunately, if you're a breeder with two chocolate parents, you can be pretty confident that you'll see chocolate offspring until the odd yellow anomaly spoils your plans. To predict your progeny when breeding Labradors, you do need to be something of a geneticist. In fact, the only sure thing in terms of colours here is that two yellow labs will always produce yellow puppies. Simple, right? And that's before we even get on to the subject of those colour diluting and colour deepening genes that produce the so-called red and silver labs to complicate matters even further. <laughs> now, the moral of this story, unless you've got a genetics degree and access to DNA testing, is don't go promising the buyers of your waiting list anything concrete about the colours. Labs weren't well known or well loved early on. The Labrador Retriever is uncontested global champion in terms of popularity. These dogs are the number one most popular breed in the USA, in Australia, in Israel and in New Zealand. They are also, not surprisingly, number one in Canada where their ancestors came from and in the UK where they became the breed they are today. But this wasn't always the case for them, especially in the early days. In fact, whilst the breed were first officially recognised by the AKC in 1917, it wasn't until the 70s, nearly half a century later, that they even broke into the top 10 in America, and even then only at number 10. By the following decade, they'd still only been made it up as far as the bronze medal position, below the Cocker and the Poodle, meaning that it wasn't until the 90s that their number one spot was secured. In 1991, when I was a baby, they hit the top and they haven't in my whole lifetime, which is pretty impressive. The story has been similar here in the UK, where the breed was established, with the native labs getting a bit of a head start on the competition, but also falling foul of another breed once since they topped the charts in 2019, when Frenchy fever swept the nation. So if there's anything to be learned about popularity here, it's that any excellent dog stands a chance of catching the world attention regardless of how humble its beginnings were or how long it takes to be noticed by the dog owners of the world. Labradors have been known to outlive tigers, and I bet since that's not a sentence you ever expected to hear, it is a fun statistic that tigers live about 25 years on average, and the two longest living Labradors on record made it to 21 and 27 respectively. Only four dogs ever have been recorded as exceeding the lifespan of the 27 year old, a Labrador who did live here in England from the 30s to the 60s. Now, these ancient and hardy dogs were, of course, anomalies, but it's worth pointing out that only Chihuahuas and Border Collies join Labradors in breeds appearing more than once on the list of top 20 longest living dogs in recorded history. Indeed, even outside of the record breakers, on average, Labradors live longer than most other breeds. According to research out of the University of Nottingham, which also noted that they were also more likely to have euthanasia as a cause of death, skewing the average mortality rate downwards, meaning they probably have more years in them. They are far from invincible, of course, and various factors, such as inbreeding, 
aging, new to status, genetic disease history and sex can bring the life expectancy down, but they are still a very robust and long-lived breed. Sadly, as many of us know already, the chocolate specimens in the Labrador world are likely to live for about 10% less than their black and yellow brothers, likely due to their genetic rarity.